everyone to this week's Cyper Conversation program brought to you by Periton. I'm Annabelle Klosterman. I am a Cyper Outreach Leader and I'm also joined by Conti. She's Cyper's Chief of Operations and she will be handling the Q&A section for today's program. We're so excited that you're able to join us for this week. As Cyper, our mission is to motivate, empower, and educate girls in cybersecurity. At any point during the program, you can feel free to ask a question via the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. So now I'm going to introduce you to our guest. Shauna Dorsey is an Information Services Manager for Mutual of Omaha Insurance. She is Omaha, Nebraska native and a graduate of Omaha North High School. And she's alumnus of the University of Nebraska Omaha. Her career includes business leadership, business development, training facilitation, and project management. She is also a community builder and she supports the workforce and community development initiatives throughout Nebraska. Now, throughout the years, she has received multiple awards. Um, in 2019, she was nominated for and won the Excellence in Community Service Award through the National Daughters of the American Revolution. And then in 2018, she was selected by Governor Pete Ricketts to join the Nebraska Information Technology Council as a commissioner and is currently serving a four year term. So with that, I'll go ahead and introduce you to our guest today, Shauna. Go ahead and take it away, Shauna. Thank you. So nice to be here today. Thank you for having me. And sorry for the bit of tech issues I had joining, but I'm glad to be here. Um, so thanks for reading my bio. It's always funny to hear that, uh, knowing that the start of my career was a little bit rocky. So I can't see everyone. But if in the chat, I think I can see the chat. Yep, I sure can. Okay, so I'm going to put this on another screen. Um, but if you have ever felt like you didn't fit in, type yes if you are comfortable doing so in the chat, or I'll just assume there's some virtual head nodding because I know that that's a common experience for everyone. Um, but I definitely can relate to you. So when I was in elementary school, I'm going to go all the way back before I tell you about my career at Mutual of Omaha, just to kind of give you some, some context. But I remember um, when I was in elementary school, if you can picture yourself here um, as a kid who loved raising her hand to answer questions in class, sitting in the front of the class, um, reading all the books and talking a lot, that was me. So the thing about that is it might sound great to um, any teacher out there that might be on this call, but to other kids, it was annoying. And I know that because they told me all the time. <laughs> and also I was one of those kids, I would raise my hand and not always have the right answer, but I was just really enthusiastic about school. Um, the crazy thing about it is that as I was going through my school experience and hearing some of the, the remarks from the kids in my class and sometimes um, even like less than well-intentioned teachers um, about how, you know, no one likes to show off or you're not that smart and things of that nature, I did become a little bit, bit discouraged over time. So while my mom and dad and other people that were close to me were like, Shauna, you got to believe in yourself. You have so much potential. I remember those comments that were more negative, even though they were in the minority. Um, those really stuck with me. And obviously they still stick with me today, nearly 40 years later, because we're still talking about it. So um, um, I'll leave you, as I'm going through this, I just, I definitely want to leave you with a few things to think about. Um, number one, as I'm sharing this part of the story, is that your words really do matter. So be really careful with the things that you say to other people, because they might end up in a presentation talking about them 40 years later. <laughs> and also, the things that you say to yourself. So even though um, people were less than encouraging to me, I knew that I enjoyed reading. I liked being smart <laughs> or uh, gaining more wisdom. And I needed to tell myself that that was okay. When I was younger, I didn't get it. It took me a while to get there. Um, but just be careful about the things that you say to yourself as well. So I'll start with that one. So when I got through middle school, and then heading into um, high school, I was pretty unmotivated. So, and thank you, Julie, for contributing to this conversation. I know it's kind of like, 
I'm a pretty casual person. So thank you for, for posting yes in the, in the comments. Um, but by the time I got to high school, those words and feelings carried, they, they stuck with me. So I remember going into high school feeling pretty unmotivated. And I know that looking back, I pretty much did the minimum it took to, to graduate. And I missed out on so many opportunities like being involved in clubs and activities, really excelling in my classes, um, earning different scholarships and things like that, just because I was like, you know, it's not good to be smart. It's not good to try that hard. What I feel so grateful for, though, is that by the time I reached my senior year, and this took a long time, so by the time I reached my senior year in high school, I had counselors and, and other teachers who cared a lot about my success ask me, you know, what, what am I doing? What's my plan? And I remember saying at the time that, you know, I just want to graduate high school and go get a job and just move on with my life. And uh, through a lot of encouragement, uh, they convinced me that I had a lot more potential than that. So I decided to really focus in my senior year. And by the way, anyone on this call who is like um, a freshman or even still in middle school, don't wait till your senior year to focus. <laughs> start now. <laughs> but I was a senior and I was like, you know, let me try some of these harder classes. So I took um, introduction to Latin, I think, in my senior year. I believe I took some other classes that I felt were like way outside of my comfort zone, but would help me as I um, thought I was going to pursue a um, degree in the medical field. So I started taking more uh, chemistry classes, things like that. So I didn't like land a 4.0 or anything like that, but I did a lot better than I ever expected to. I also ended up applying for a few different scholarships and ended up with a, a full ride to UNO that was um, based on my um, status of being a first generation college student. So both my mom and my dad had at that time taken some college classes, but neither of them had completed um, their formal education by that time. So. I was able to get into that program. Um, and still, interestingly, when I get into college, all of these still feelings of inadequacy are carrying, are um, still with me. And so I really had to struggle and dig deep to try to do well in college. And I did, I did okay, I did okay. But I did start to develop a sense of belief in myself. And a lot of that was supported by some of the type of job, types of jobs I had while I was in college. So um, I did have a full ride, but I still had a bills outside of, outside of um, school, like some of us do. And so I took on a few different jobs. Like I waited tables, I sold cars. Um, I'm sure I did some other stuff. But the thing that all of those positions had in common is they were all customer service focused. And one other piece of advice I would give you is if you can get access or um, get into positions where you'll have the ability or opportunity, I should say, to interact with very easygoing to challenging personalities, you know, you just never know what you're gonna get. I think you should definitely take those on because I think beyond the technical skills that you'll learn in school, it is really critical to figure out how to work with people. People you like, people you don't like, people who are easy to work with and those who are extremely challenging. Um, being able to navigate those situations will make a world of difference in your career. So highly recommend it for anyone on this call. But as I, so as I got through college um, and got through those positions, uh, when I was done, I ended up in this really interesting spot where I knew that I wasn't necessarily interested in becoming a software engineer or anything like that, but I really did love working in IT. So my uh, degree, I didn't mention this, but my degree was in management information systems and I have an undergrad and a graduate degree in MIS. So I found myself in a weird spot though because I wasn't super technical, but I was very strong on customer service. And so uh, one of my favorite jobs in IT was as a help desk um, specialist. And this is actually one of the hardest jobs in my opinion in IT <laughs> because you're troubleshooting a variety of issues. People often think that um, and I'm sure no one on this call, but people in the people who are not as familiar with um, careers in tech think it's pretty narrow. But as many of you know, it is extremely broad. And so when I was working on a help desk back in 2010, I would get calls 
for uh, people who needed their cell phones fixed to their monitors not working to um, uh, they didn't have enough memory in their in their towers. So I was under desks pulling out towers and replacing uh, memory. And I remember the very first time I did that, um, <laughs> this uh, one of my coworkers said something to me like, "Yeah, you need to swap the memory out of that tower." And I was like, "I have no idea what you're even talking about, right?" <laughs> so I figured it out. Did that for a couple of years and um, moved my way up in that organization. And also within that company, they had this program called the. Um, the give committee so it was really focused on community service and those types of activities and um i have have always been drawn to that so i'm in uh this company doing something i'm not super familiar with and one of my go-to strategies still in life is to bring along people who are smarter than me i do that all the time and there's always somebody smarter in the room so when i was on the help desk dealing with the memory issues and things i didn't understand Instead of beating myself up about not knowing, I would always bring along someone else and give them all the credit and not to boost anyone's ego, but because A, that's the right thing to do, and B, it's so much faster for the customer, customer and ultimately, that's what we're there for, not to serve our own egos. So I often brought people along, gave them encouragement along the way, and that's one piece of what I still do today. On the flip side of, uh, of this at that company, I had the opportunity, like I mentioned, to work on this community service group. And so I got a lot of joy out of that. And I still do a lot of that today. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit in my career here um, so that we can get to the Q&A. But um, after a few, a few years of working on the, the help desk and moving into different roles, I was asked to join a company um, that was going to start, I'm sorry, join a group of people that were going to start a school. And I live in Nebraska. And we are very, still to this day, very traditional about the types of education a person should get before they're ready to get a job. So very much four-year degree and, and or associate's degrees are also accepted. What this group was looking at starting was a code school, which is, to summarize very quickly for us, what it meant was uh, a very short program, like three to six months or so, part-time, uh, taught by people who do the work day to day. Um, to help people who don't currently have the skills in IT level up just enough to be ready for an entry-level job in IT. I thought that was a brilliant idea. No one else did. But I was like, this makes so much sense and we need more options for people. So I started that company with uh, four other people that I didn't really know. Um, I also couldn't code. Like I told you, I'm not a super technical person, but I'm good at managing projects and I know how to work with people. So I'm like, well, I can use those pieces. And then I have all these other smart people with me and we'll figure this out. And it was super rocky. So the good news is, is after having gone through several iterations of getting beat up a little bit um, about uh, how I operate and then turning that into a sense of belief and persistence, it happened all over again. But the good news is, is that I was kind of used to it by that time. I had developed some thicker skin. So when I was coming up against the hurdles, like this school doesn't make any sense, you shouldn't be, you can't teach this type of thing in this duration. Instead of fighting against it or, or retreating, I remember thinking to myself, well, let me dig into this with a potential customer and ask, what do we need to do to make it so that you would potentially hire someone out of this program? And long story short, within three years, we did position that company to be acquired by another company. And so um, I, I share all that without sharing a lot <laughs> to say that it's super important to absolutely believe in yourself and be persistent because you would be amazing at the, amazed by the number of people who quit too soon. And I definitely have been in that boat before, but learned it is so important to um, continue to persist no matter what obstacles are facing you, unless it's something that is truly, cannot, cannot truly be overcome. But in many cases, that's not where we're at. So after we sold that company, um, I worked for the company that bought it for about a year and a half um, as a vice president of, of tech education in a couple of different roles before I decided that I wanted to go off on my own again. And um, I put something out on LinkedIn and I'm gonna back up just a little bit in the story to tell you that when I was running the school, I remember submitting a lot of stories to um, our local newspaper about different outcomes we had achieved. So one example is we had a woman who was a um, barista in a coffee shop. 
and she ended up going through our program and she went from kind of a minimum wage job to um, a well beyond living wage job for her and her family. And it was life changing for her. Um, I remember telling them that, that story and they were like, that's just too small for, you know, the scope of stories that we share in the World Herald. And I was very disappointed. But then I thought to myself, if this story is important to me, then I have to find a way to share it. And so then I became a huge fan of social media, even though at that time, I just could not stand Facebook or any of the other things. I just didn't get it. Um, but social media became one of my best friends and helped me tell the stories about my, our students and some of the successes that we were able to achieve. And so when I uh, finally decided to move on to going back to um, a, a running another company or something like that, I posted it on, on LinkedIn, which is the adult version of Facebook and said, I am quitting my job today and I'm going to start consulting again. And within a couple of weeks, I had offers to help people who were interested in talent development and some of the work, the type of work we had done with the school. Uh, one of those companies was uh, Mutual of Omaha and that's how I landed there. Um, they were really interested in the community work I had done on the, with the school. So anyway, I've been there now for uh, three years and I really didn't expect to ever work for a large company. I, I feel very scrappy and entrepreneurial. And so I just didn't think that that would be a fit for me, but it's been amazing. Um, so I started off part-time, uh, worked as a consultant, helped stand up a few new programs that are very targeted on workforce and community building. So I'm just continuing to do those, that same type of work, um, but in a large corporation, super fulfilling and and that's where I'm at today. So um, in short, I would say the main things that I want to leave you with before I stop talking here are to remember, it's super important um, that what you say both to yourself and to others, keep those messages positive as much as you can. A great advice from anyone's grandparent is if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And that is true for other people and to yourself. Um, Continue to believe in yourself and be persistent. There will always be people who don't understand what you're trying to do, um, but just keep moving forward. And finally, I think it's so important, more than this other stuff, or maybe equally as important, to have a sense of humor about yourself. Like I've laughed a lot through this as I think about some of the things that I've experienced or done. And I just, I don't know, I think life, life is a gift and, and it's important to, um, to be able to laugh about it at times and then also understand that failure is a part of the process like every successful person you've ever met met has failed a bunch and if they say they haven't i would be very skeptical <laughs> so anyway that's all i have um i really appreciate the attention and and your interest in what i had to say today thank you so much for being our guest today you are that was very inspiring. And you know, a lot of points that you said, they resonate with, I'm pretty sure a lot of us, like the questioning yourself and the, am I good enough? That's, that's just the worst feeling. It never goes away. Uh, but <laughs> so we do have a few questions for you from our audience. Um, we have another one from Julie. So Julie is um, our chief of strategies daughter. Uh, Kate, she's Katie Shuck's daughter and um, so she says she loves your shirt oh thank and, you and she wants to know did you ever have other girls make fun of you or not help or not encourage you absolutely yes um I oh man I can think of so many things that people have said over over time and that's the, the crazy thing like I can remember things that people said to me like when I was eight years old um so yeah I don't know if you want to hear them because it's not going to make you feel good but I will tell you that um the things that I have to always when I'm reflecting on those situations I try to remember that they were little kids too at the time so I might be still having those feelings about it at I'm 41 now, so still having those feelings about it in my 40s, but we're talking about children. And they're not very wise, you know, there's just like a lot of wise kids out there. So I have to put that into context. But I will say today that um, for me, one of the worst um, situations for me is to ever 
deal with people who are bullies. I can't stand it. And so if, and bullying can take all sorts of forms. You all know that we have like a lot of um, confident cyber bullies, you know, anonymous <laughs> bullies. But I would say that it's really important for me if I'm ever in a situation where someone is um, attacking another person and they're not present or especially if they are, but if they're not to try to stand up for them and say, you know, that's not right for you to say that. Have you had a conversation with this person? What is, where is that opinion coming from? Like really questioning people's, people's, um, people's comments and, and thought processes are some of the things I try to do now, so. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's bad enough that we have to compete so much and then there's people trying to bring you down. It's just, it, it's, right. I don't know. There's no words to describe that feeling. I agree. Yeah, so you- So, worked... um, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna ask another question. Do you have something else you wanted to add? Oh, no, I was going to say I can see the Q&A for some reason. I didn't see it right there. So now I can see it in front of me in case you want me to just answer the questions. But... Oh, no, it's OK. I can do that. Okay. So um, okay. you have worked with people for quite a while now. Like you've worked in customer service. You've helped with the help desk. So what would you say or what advice would you give to like very techie people on how they can gain more people experience? Great question. I think that that's something you have to be pretty intentional about. And so I know in the COVID times, which is, you know, has been going on forever, but once things open back up a little bit, I think that one of the things you can do, um, especially if you're a really technical person and you are very comfortable with your tech, with technology, is find ways to mentor small groups or even um, most libraries have like, <laughs> these, I'm not laughing because it's funny, I'm laughing because I know I'm gonna be in this room one day, but they have these classes for um, senior citizens to help them get comfortable with technology. And so that could be something else that you uh, volunteer to participate in. So then it's not so far outside of your comfort zone, but you're also interacting with um, different types of people. So- um, Just an idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. Because it's not too, like you said, it's not too far of, out of their comfort, comfort zone, but they're still gaining that people skills, that people experience. Right. Yeah. Right. And here's the crazy thing about it is like most employers love to see that kind of stuff on a resume. So it's like a triple win. People that you're helping get some value out of it. You build your people skills. Looks great on a resume. It's all good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of people don't place enough importance on soft skills or people skills. Right. Until they realize, oh, hey, you know what would have been great so when I was trying to communicate right. my feelings? People skills. Yep. Very true. Yeah. So um, is the school that you started still there? And how old do you have to be to attend that school? It is. And I think that's one of my most things I'm most proud of because I think as a business owner and I'll go on this little tangent and I'll answer your question too about how old you have to be to attend um, is that you don't ever want a business that you sell to fail because you don't run it anymore. Like that's the worst feeling. It's some people would feel pride in that where they're like, I sold it and it couldn't last without me. I, on the other hand, was like, I will feel so much better if it's still in existence many years after I'm gone, which it is. Um, so as far as I know, like people that run that school now, they have opportunities for uh, people as young as like elementary school all the way up to 18 plus people who are trying to start careers. So I'll drop in the um, name of the school in the chat in case anybody is interested, but it's called AIM Code School. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. So another question from our audience based on being pulled down or how, what would you say to those people who are being put down by others? Like, how would you tell them or what would you tell them for them to stand up to themselves, like for themselves? Yeah, I know that that's a hard one because it depends on who's saying it, how much value you give their opinions and what the potential implications are. So I always am thinking about all of these factors. Yeah. Um, so I, I know that that's a hard question to answer. Um, and it's especially hard to deal with in the moment. 
and I am kind of, kind of delaying answering this. I'm going to be honest with you because I'm thinking about <laughs> what what would I do? Like the way I would answer that today is much different than how I would answer it when I was a lot younger. Um, so my common strategy was just to retreat and like beat myself up a little bit about it. Like that was what I that was my go-to. But now because of where I'm at today and how I see myself today, I would ask the person, why are you saying that to me? Like, what, why do you hold that opinion? I think that when you ask people questions, it puts them in a mode where they have to defend whatever they're saying to you. And most likely they're not going to have a good response for why they're being a bully. They won't. They'll probably just say more mean stuff and you have to walk away. But I think that that might be one way to stand up for yourself, which is, and so it's not like, let me criticize you back because that's not a winning strategy at all. But it's really just about like, why are you behaving this way? <laughs> if that makes sense. So I don't think there's a perfect answer to this one though. So I'm sorry if that wasn't super helpful. No, it's more like you're inviting a conversation with them to try to figure out why they would try to, you know, pull you down, put you down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to ignore it. There are some times where people are just not worth engaging. So you got to kind of have to pick your battles too. Yeah. And, um, I was scrolling through Instagram a couple of days ago and I saw this like, uh, I wanna call it a self-help page, but I'm not entirely sure I wanna call it that, but they had this great advice on something kind of similar. Like if you wouldn't take their advice, then don't bother uh, about their criticism of you. And I'm like- That is perfect. That is a great piece of advice, mm -hmm. but yeah. I agree. So um, thank you. I see that we are at 4.30. So thank you for answering our questions. Shana, I know oh, sure. Annabelle has some things to say. Yeah, thank you so sure. much. And just, go ahead. Oh, sorry, really quick. I do have a couple more minutes, if you do, to answer any additional, maybe one more question if we have yes. one that you want to tackle. Okay. We have questions. We're just like, oh, it's 4.30. So. <laughs> <laughs> so when you come across a challenge that you're having some kind of a struggle with, you're having trouble with, how do you deal with that? Do you just go, do you have like a head on approach or are you more like a sit back down, you know, analyze and then how do you deal with that? Yeah, I'm more of a head on person. But what I try to do is really think about what's the next step I can take because I think that, um, spending too much time in analysis is not really a good thing for me to do because I'll end up in this thing called analysis paralysis. So I have to take a step. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know what, I know what you mean. You're like analyzing everything. You're like, okay, so right. maybe this, wait, why am I thinking that? Maybe it's this. And it's yeah, just exactly. like a rabbit hole. Exactly. Yeah. So um, another thing that we are, or we want to know is how do you find people that help you? Like, how do you find mentors? Is there like a specific thing that you do when you reach out to others? Like, do you ask them, hey, would you be my mentor for so-and-so? Is there a strategy mm -hmm. that you follow? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. And so I do think that it's, um, that not every mentor is good at everything. So I think it is important to have several mentors. Um, but one of the things that I try to do is if I'm in a meeting or attending an event or something like that, and I hear someone who's really inspiring to me, I will literally just reach out to them and say, hey, I think what you said was amazing. And I would love to learn more from you. What's, what, I, what tips do you have for me? And if they respond, which most of the time they do because people feel encouraged by um, people reaching out. It doesn't happen um, as often as you would think. So when that does happen, and if they do reach out and the advice is great, which it usually is, then I'll ask for a meeting. So I like to just kind of, again, just nudge things along. <laughs> so that's, that's my approach. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you say, hey, could you help me? Instead of saying, help me. It, it makes all the difference. Yes. Right. And yeah. asking for something specific is really key. It just, it helps people kind of narrow down how to support you. 
Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we have one last question for you. Okay. <laughs> Do you keep a journal to help you remember what you've done and how you've improved? I think it's a wonderful question. Yeah, I do. I'll show you something here. Um, so when I was in elementary school, I really loved getting those gold stars. And I forgot about that until recently. But I was like, you know what, I should give myself gold stars. So whenever I achieve something, I have like a daily set of like five tasks to do. Then I give myself a star for each one. So you can kind of see, wait, let me see, here we go. So <laughs> you can kind of see it. Well, anyway. So each of those is kind of like the five things that I have to do. And whenever I have a day where I achieve all the things, I give myself an extra boost on this page. But it's really nice to look at this. Um, as opposed to a journal, I do like journaling, but my handwriting is terrible and I get tired of writing. So this is a quick way for me to say, you know what, I've had like seven great days in a row and to keep myself inspired and moving forward. So that's what I do. $2 gold stars. I love that. We all deserve gold stars. I love that. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for answering all of our questions. We're so grateful. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you thank so you much so for much. having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. I really resonate with you when you say you have those little gold stars. It's kind of about finding out what works for you. And that's something that yeah. works for you. And um, coming up with how to, I don't know, motivate yourself to keep on going. All right, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and open a quick poll um, for all our attendees to go ahead and fill out just to find out a little bit more information about you, how you heard about our program. Now we're so appreciative for your attendance, whether you're watching the recording or whether you're joining us live. If you are watching the recording, we're hoping you can join us live every Wednesday from 4 to 4.30 p.m. Central. We have a great lineup of schedule for the next few months and we can't wait to share it all with you. Um, be feel free to go ahead and follow us on our social medias and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on our latest posts. You can always find out more about Cyper through our website, cyper.org, or um, more about the programs and our upcoming conversations as well. So Shauna, again, thank you so much for joining us and sharing some wonderful words of wisdom and advice to all of us. We hope the rest Absolutely. of you- Absolutely, and I know it wasn't I know it wasn't cybersecurity focused, mm -hmm. but I hope there is something in there for you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I feel like a lot of the advice you gave was something that everyone can relate to, whether they're in the cybersecurity field or maybe just want to learn a little bit more about cybersecurity. So thank you so much for sharing. Sure. You're welcome. All right. We hope the rest Talk of you, you later. will we hope the rest of you will be joining us for next week's Cyber Conversation as well, as we will be welcoming Tia Hopkins. She is a VP of Global Solutions Architect, and also she's a professor of cybersecurity. She recently founded Cyber Security, which is a nonprofit organization aimed at empowering women of color to be successful in the cybersecurity world. But Shauna, thank you so much for joining us once again and inspiring all of us. We hope everyone has a great night. <laughs>